I didn't know, sir. Sir, I didn't know. It's all right, Benson. Last minute decision. Please do not pretend you are ignorant of where he is. Am I my cousin's keeper? I should be obliged if you would tell me where he has gone. I know what he's gone to do. Where has he gone? You have the advantage of me, my dear. I was expecting to walk over to Home Farm with him this morning. Have you no pity for us? You encouraged him into this nightmarish life. I pity for you. At Summerley House, with your lovely children, the love you have for each other. Where has he gone? I can see I am unwelcome. Some unwitting fault, I fear. I shall return to town and leave you in peace. Oh, oh, Mrs. Dr. Watson. Watson, we have been missing oh, you. Only, a, only another ten days. Yes. Morning, Holmes. Uh, don't ask me to comment on your new tie. <laughs> Quite heartless, Holmes. That woman is undoubtedly coming here. She's been staring up at this window for the past three minutes. Oh, I do wish she'd make up her mind. I could ask Mrs. Hudson to bring up an extra car. Handsome, isn't she? Who? Hmm. It also something of importance to make her hesitate so long. A client. Three for the establishment, five in total. If it's worth it. Oh, anonymous was the word you used. Where we're going is as anonymous as you'll ever find. Every compartment has a curtain, even. No one will see you. Oh, good Lord, you're not taking these with you, are you? No. Oh, no, 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 no. You may as well tear them up and drop them in the Thames. <laughs> oh, 
40 pounds. I'll, uh, I'll give you a receipt. Oh. Oh. oh, that'll be our fair visit. Please do sit down. This receipt, Gedgrave. What about it? Well, what are you playing at? We yeah. signed it Carter. You don't expect me to use my real name doing this sort of work, do you? Carter's my real name. I could have signed it anything. I've entrusted you with my real name, Mr. Savage. Please don't complain. your help. I am... Anything you say here will of course be treated in the strictest confidence. We have kept the secrets of kings, madam. I am... my husband. My husband is a financier. You have heard of the Oxford and Lombard Bank? Yes. The chief shareholders are the Conyers? My husband's family on his mother's side. He is one of the directors. The job is well within his powers, only... Victor has found the work increasingly irksome. He entertains an ambition, you see, which none of his family would begin to understand. What is that? He wishes to be a poet. He has come to believe that opium heightens his powers, intensifies the evidence of his senses. This may be so temporarily, but as I'm sure you know, the effect only survives the first few times the drug is taken. That is so, is it not? Oh, yes, indeed. Addiction quickly follows, very often for life. The uh, infernal substance soon offers the addict nothing except relief from the terrible effects of its absence. I believe Victor stands on the threshold of addiction. He left a note for me this morning which suggests he knows what danger he's in. You are going? Well, clearly Dr. Watson is the person to consult in this matter. Uh, no, Mr. Holmes, no. There is much more to it than that. There is Mr. Calverton Smith. Calverton Smith? Victor's cousin. He has a malign influence. I am sure he has driven Victor to this. And I am certain he has done it for his own ends. On the corner. I do hope this is not a wild goose chase. How can it be? Well, 
I think you've had your head turned by a pretty woman. Thank you. Oh, yes. What about Culverton Smith? I looked him up. Culverton Smith did some important medical work while he was in the East. He pushed back the boundaries of science. However, he was obliged to publish his findings at his own expense. Why? He's an amateur, and the professionals are jealous. <laughs> well, I can see why he interests you. Mystery guests. Who are they? I couldn't let Colonel Carnac be the only celebrity. I don't want him at our table because he's a celebrity, my darling. It's just that he's horribly rich, or rather his wife is, and they bank with the Oxford and Lombard. Personally, I can't think of anything worse than hunting stories all through dinner. Nor I. So I persuaded a rather more interesting hunter to join us. Who is it? Don't tease, Addy. Sherlock Holmes. I say, that is something of a coup. Well done. Oh, look, Culverton Smith's here, too. I'm so glad he felt able to invite him again, Addy, darling. Look at him. Anyone would think somebody was his. I do dislike it. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Culbert and Smith. Dear Adelaide promised me a surprise guest. I feared it might be somebody who was famous for being famous. Someone of your distinction I'd not expected at all. Not I, one of yours. Not mine. I make no claims to distinction, Mr. Holmes. You are too modest. Your account of the pathology of the Sumatran river fever is a masterpiece. Thank you. Thank you. For a lure to work, of course, you have to make the animal believe it's safe. Now, that's all very well. The animals involved, however, have a highly developed sense of danger. I'm sure Mr. Holmes must have that sense, too. Do you, Mr. Holmes? Yes. I see it. Yes. You mean that the detective could be said to move in a world of predators and victims? Oh, we all do that, Carl. Even humble family solicitors. Yes. And you would have enemies, Mr. Holmes, would you not? Yes. Yes, it would take something, I dare say, to bring Mr. Holmes onto a lure and dispatch him. It would take careful study of his habits, and a half-light shot, or worse. It might even be necessary to follow him up, to his lair, even. Bertram, be quiet. Eating, Mr. Holmes. With so much to observe, food becomes of secondary importance. What have you observed so far? Courage, fever, gluttony, acute irritation, envy, wit, intelligence. I mean, just the usual. Vices and virtues with any large English country house. This is very good. Do you know the game <coughs> of shove halfpenny? Well, it's similar. I call this one rug skatering. My more serious gambling friends. The stockbroking fraternity, that is to say. <laughs> I've introduced it to their establishments to the fury of their wives. It is agreed, however, that the authentic summary version is best. <laughs> and she never wore them at all. <laughs> <laughs> will the men be mortified if we don't cheer them on at their silly games? I dare say they will. 
It's almost a reason for not doing it. <laughs> but for the sake of harmony, we indulge, little boys. Hold on, hold on. again out jumped all his <laughs> so the lawyer takes the pot thank you well done charles mm -hmm. my turn now fate vosier gentlemen i should halve your estimates of last time <laughs> fellow. I could do nothing for him, Mr. Holmes. Not even I. The nursing was all right, too. A tragic business. Are you satisfied me upon one point? Of course. This disease, do you know what it was? All the signs point to that class of fevers in which the Sumatran River fever is the most deadly. It was not necessarily that, however. Or something very like it. I have advised that the poor fellow's body is handled with extreme care. 
It is a disease transmitted through broken skin, you see. They cannot be too careful. How did Savage come by such a thing? Ah, uh, I can rely on your discretion. Of course. I understand Savage uh, sometimes frequented, well, that's to say, his affairs took him to a part of Rotherhithe inhabited mostly by Chinese and Lascars. He must have picked it up there. The authorities in Rotherhithe must be informed. Well, they will be. Whether the measures they take turn out to be appropriate is another matter. Most institutions, I'm afraid, are run by the criminally lazy. I'm a Penrose Fisher, and the director of Little I'll do what I can. I'm grateful for your interest, Mr. Holmes. Poor Adelaide, this will hit her very hard. Must leave Somerley. As soon as Will is proved, Calvert and Smith is within his rights to ask you to go. I'm very sorry, Adelaide. All this has its origins in old Sir Bernard's will. Partly I blame myself. This entailment to Victor's eldest cousin of the house and the rest of it is something The rest of it? The income from the Berkshire estate. That will go to him too? Yes. What is left? Enough for you to live. Modestly and respectably. You will not be able to continue as you have done. No. I see. As I say, I had asked Victor many times to change the terms of the entail to favour you in your lifetime. It would have been legal, of course, and easily done, but... Uh, Victor was young. Surely. Covert and Smith will not exercise his right to evict Mrs. Savage. He might. Why do you think that? He's been in touch. He seems to know the main dispositions of the will. He talked of the estate income being put to a proper use, whatever that meant. He seemed to think that Adelaide would be able to rely on her family. They haven't the means. When he knows that, he must relent. I doubt it. He has wanted something like this to happen ever since he came into our lives. He encouraged all that was weakest in Victor in the hope of some disaster. This is a triumph for him. It may be worth talking to him, Adelaide. I suppose so. If you could bring yourself to plead with him. For the children, I will do even that. Oh, Percy Dudley, on those. <coughs> now, remember, all this happened nine days ago. That was the day when the Queen entertained the Sultan of Kalipur and Frivolous won the Birkenhead Stakes. A good wood. Right. Harry, where are your boots? Oh, I see. Well, then, off to Rotherhithe. Oh. Good luck. Good luck. There, Holmes. That is a list of every blemish I could find on the skin surface. I presume you were seeking the means of transmission? Yes. Through broken skin? That is how Carlton Smith believes it was transmitted. His opinion is worth knowing, certainly.
What do you think of him, Fisher? He is a friend of yours? Not at all. I hardly know him. I have read a couple of his papers, that's all. Well, I think his work, in parts, brilliant. If he has a fault, it is that he can accept no criticism whatsoever. I did find an insect bite, but no other puncture of the skin at all. I even looked inside the mouth. It seems clear that no human agency was involved. I assume you're investigating the possibility of this disease having been passed on deliberately. Well, what a unique delight to meet a man with a mind as logical as yours. Is this him? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Holmes. Ah, bravo, Ben! You are... Uh, Gedgrave, uh, John Gedgrave. Holmes. This way. Recognised him as soon as I see the newspaper. That's him, all right. How did you come to be acting for him? Advert. Gentleman of discretion required, with knowledge of doc etiquette. Doc etiquette? For knowing your way round the poppy houses. Opium. Well, I knew one or two of the uh, better places. Was the advertisement placed by Savage? No. Who then? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Gedgrave, you wouldn't lie to me, would you? No, no. It, it was some fellow I met in a rented office. Describe him for me. Well, I, I can't. Well, what I mean is, I never saw the fella. He, he didn't mean me to. He kept a, a light shining in my eyes all the time. Indeed. When was this? The 14th. He paid all right. Told me I was to be contacted. And I was. To meet him. What happened to him? I don't want any trouble. That's why I come to you. Where did you take him? House in Duke's Alley. It's a good place. Good? Well, never had any problems there. Good place. What happened to him? Holmes! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... Thank you, Mr. Gedgrave, for your trouble. Any time, Mr. Holmes, any time. Oh, generous. That is, sir. Uh, generous. I will need a guide. In Rotherhive. You want the best places? I'm your man. Look no further. Tomorrow morning. 10.30. Done. The, uh, the Red Slipper Club. Ask for, uh, Carter. Frank Carter. Will that be you, Mr. Gedgrave? <laughs> Mrs. Watson? Dr. Watson may be staying for dinner. Now, Watson. Culverton Smith means to throw Mrs. Savage and her children out of Summerley House. How is he able to do that? The house is entailed to him, an old will which has never been revived. Well, that is interesting. You know what this means? It means that Culverton Smith had a motive for doing away with his cousin. Savage is dead, killed by a disease in which Culverton Smith was the acknowledged expert. No, 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 no. Are you deliberately trying to misunderstand me? You have pointed out a remarkable coincidence, that is all. No inferences can be drawn we from it. We cannot allow Mrs. Savage to be thrown into the street by this fellow. We may have to. Calverton Smith who rented the office. I dare say, but it proves nothing. Well, there must be a way of stopping it, Holmes, surely. No. I doubt it more and more. Suppose you were convinced of his guilt. 
What would you do then? You know my methods? I would get an answer to the house. Then that's what I shall do. You don't have to come. No, unless I shall. You've already had your head turned. I must make sure you don't get your neck broken as well. Once poor Savage had been convinced that opium would open the door to the, the mysteries of the poetic craft, Calvert and Smith would have had him in his power, wouldn't he? He traded on Savage's sense of guilt. He knew that Savage would want to continue experimenting with the drug far away from Summerlin. What you have to face, Watson, is that Savage's catching the disease in Rotherhithe is entirely plausible. The coincidence that Smith's expertise in the matter is exactly that. A coincidence. You can't hang a man on coincidence. reason to believe that, um, well, as a matter of fact, you are trespassing. Sergeant, I'm sure you're as aware as I am that the laws of trespass in this country are most curious, not to say odd. I should know. I have responsibility for hundreds of acres which are about to be stolen from me through legal trickery by that man. A man who preyed on my husband like some bloated parasite, corrupted him and drove him to his death. And now, now he will not speak to the woman he has widowed. He won't. He knows he has no justice on his side. Merely cold legality. Benson, Mrs. Savage should now return to Summerley House. Yes, sir. <gasps> Ma'am, you have my assurance. I will pursue Carlton Smith. I will not rest until he's renounced his plans to ruin you. And Mr. Holmes. Oh, I see. I do not blame him. He only sees it as the world sees it. Unfortunate and cold-hearted on Mr. Smith's part, perhaps. But no case to answer. No case to answer. Smith! Smith! Ha! Oh! It is a singular coincidence, is it not, that you should inherit so much from the man who dies of a disease upon which you are the sole expert? Wow! Well, Coincidence bordering upon the unbelievable. Let me tell you, the doors of your profession, which have been closed to you, will now be locked and bolted against you. It is my mission. Mr. Holmes.
A decent tobacco. Telemark Carlisle. I know you will be sensible enough not to come to rely on this, but it will help you through these difficult days. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, you must come quickly. It's Mr. Holmes. Oh, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Why didn't you call me sooner? He wouldn't give me leave. I said permission or no, I am. And he said, well, let him be watched. Oh, God. I think he's dying. Now, now, Mrs. Hudson, I'm sure it's not as bad as you fear. But he won't let me know. He hasn't eaten a scrap. He has had plenty to drink, no, I, I trust. Not, not a drop has passed his lips these three days. And he's been to Rotherhithe. He thinks he caught the fever there. Oh, he's dying, dog. <laughs> Holmes. Holmes. Watson, we have fallen upon bad times. My dear fellow. Stand back! Please stand right back! I'll have you thrown out of the house. I only wish to help. The best thing you can do to help is to do as you're told. Of course. You're wrong. What about Carleton Smith? We may not like the man, but he's no murderer. The river fever is abroad in Rotherhithe. Holmes, we must get you to hospital at once. Can I give you this? Please. Don't you see this thing is contagious? Do you think such a consideration weighs with me? Keep your distance. This could run through London. Well, if there are bivalves, presumably there are monovalves. It's tramps. Holmes? Well, if I'd have a doctor, I'd at least let me have someone in whom I have confidence. You have none in me. Your friendship, yes, but, I mean, you're only a general practitioner with mediocre qualifications. That remark is unworthy of you, Holmes. It shows me very clearly the state of your nerves. I demonstrate your ignorance. What do you know that's happened, Uli Fever? What do you know that black is a corruption? I have never heard of either. There are strange pathological disorders in the East. If you have no faith in me, let me fetch Jasper Meek. Penrose Fish Ames chair here is in London. Let me fetch him. Well, there is only one man who can help me. The man we have maligned. Carverton Smith, do you believe he would help? He must. He's my only chance. Oysters. They do breed, don't they? I cannot think, but the whole bed of the ocean is one solid mass of oysters. Holmes, can you hear me? I'm going for Culverton Smith this instant. Then go. I'm to bring him back here with me. Oh, he is the emperor of river fevers. Of course you must persuade him, but you must return alone. <laughs> Any excuse not to come with him? Don't my apologize. I do. Don't fail me, Watson. Of course not. And what of rivers? Are there no natural enemies to limit the increase of these creatures? It's horrible. Horrible. Mrs. 
essential that I see Mr. Calverton Smith. Mr. Calverton Smith, sir, does not appreciate being disturbed during his hours of study. Just a minute, sir. You can just... Smith! Sir! Smith! Please, sir! Smith! Sir, you can't just... You can't just walk in, sir... Smith. What the devil do you mean by this, sir? I've come from Sherlock Holmes. He is desperately ill, and he begs you to come to him. Why? You are a physician. Tend him yourself. He believes that you are the only man who can save him. Save him? I beg you to come. What has he contracted? He thinks it is the fever which killed your cousin. How did he come by it? He has been in Rotherhithe. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry to hear this. I hope you are wrong. Despite his insulting behavior the other day, I have every respect for his talents. He is an amateur of crime, as I am of disease. For him, the villain. For me, the microbe. Here are my prisoners. Among these gelatin cultivations, some of the worst offenders in the world are doing time. Please, please, there is no time to lose. He is desperately ill. Of what consequence is that to me? He maligned me in the most outrageous manner. He, he regrets it. He was most insistent upon that point. He, he knows that the fever was abroad in Rotherhithe. How long has he been ill? Three days. Is he delirious? Sometimes seriously so. I will come with you at once. I have another appointment. Very well, I shall go alone. Staples, you can rely upon my being there in half an hour at most. Did you see him? Yes, he's coming. Oh, you're the best of messengers. You can disappear from the scene, huh? Well, I should stay to hear his opinion, Holmes. I really should. No, he's morbidly sensitive. We must let him practice his arts alone. My dear Holmes, I That's should That's the front stay. door. It's him. Hide! Hide! Quick, you can me! Smith, I hardly dare to hope. I should imagine not. Yet you see, I am here. Coals of fire, Holmes. Coals of fire. It's noble. You know what is wrong with you? Yes. You recognize the symptoms? Yes, quite well. Three days with you then? Yes. You have lasted well. With Victor, it was all over by now. Uh, I have noticed this. The more mature coolies seemed to last longer. Water, please. Could I have some water? Oh, the final thirst. Uh, <laughs> Your very end. Please help me. Help me if you can. I can. I could champion your cause. My cause? Your work. It deserves to be trumpeted. I, I could be of service. I doubt it. Thanks to you, the damage done to my reputation is irreparable. You mean... Victor Savage, your cousin? No, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> Did you? Were you involved? I couldn't be sure. <laughs> <laughs> the great detective couldn't be sure. Well, it doesn't matter to me if you know how Savage died. I don't see you in the witness box. Quite another sort of box. Uh, uh, uh. I put an infected mosquito to his neck while he was in an opiate stupor. There. But you, how did you come to contract it? 
That fellow who came for me told me you thought you'd caught it in Rotherhithe. Oh, I, I could only account for it, so. Cast your mind back. Oh, God! Crabs! Oh, yes! Crabs! Help me! I will. <laughs> the pain! Yes, the coolies used to do some squealing before the end. Well, now. A few days before your symptoms began, did you receive anything by post? I can't think. A parcel? No. You did? Only a sample of some tobacco. That's right. Did you notice the construction of the box? Under the tobacco, two small tacks stuck out. You didn't see them? They were infected. You fool. You would tangle with me, and now you are finished. The box. Where is it? Where is it? Turn up the gas. The shadows begin to lengthen, do they? Yes, I'll do that. I'd prefer to see you die in the light. There it is. Your last shred of evidence. Well, well. Is there any other little service I can do you, my friend? A match of a cigarette would be most welcome. <laughs> Three days without food and water is one thing. But to be without tobacco, I have found most irksome. Come in, Inspector. By turning up the gas, Smith was good enough to give our signal himself. This is the self-confessed murderer of Victor Savage. You may lie as you like, Holmes. You have no corroboration for your insane suspicions. Watson. He has a box behind his back. Treat it very gingerly. And don't open it! Damn you! Well, stop it! Damn you! The best way of acting a part successfully is to be it. It's the Vaseline. For the forehead. Huh? Belladonna in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Beeswax. Encrustation around the lips. <laughs> why? Why wouldn't you let me near you when in truth there was no infection? Do you imagine that I have no respect for your medical talents? At six feet, I could deceive you. But any closer. With your astute judgment? No, 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 no. No, it was essential that you and Mrs. Hudson believed me to be at death's door. Otherwise, Smith would have smelt a rat. Rats! Beeswax! Mr. Holmes, you are the very worst tenant in London! Georgie says he's going to guard the house. Oh, they're <laughs> fine children, Mrs. Savage. They're little angels. We're usually known as little savages. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dr. Watson, for letting us keep our home. Oh, thank you, my dear. I'd like to take the credit, but it belongs to Mr. Holmes. Very grateful to you, sir. 
My privilege, Miss Savage. 